Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and sitting in front of me are some very exciting parts. Uh, we have two different sizes of brushless hub motor. So brushless hub motors are essentially a brushless motor encased inside a wheel. So you can see here that I have two wheels. One of them is for a kind of sit on scooter and the other one is actually skateboard wheel size. So this thing is designed to sit on the axle of a longboard and push a person along, but it is a brushless motor. It's actually a censored brushless motor. However, I won't be using these, or at least I won't be using the sensor at this point in time. I'll probably look at doing that in the future, but for the moment, the um, speed controllers and stuff that I have can't use the sensor, so we're just gonna be using the actual brushless motor inside. Uh, and like I said, I've got two different sizes. So the small one, the skateboard wheel, this is a 100 watt or 150 watt skateboard mo uh, brushless motor. And then this guy out over here, the big, big one, uh, which is actually really quite massive. This is supposed to be 350 watts. Uh, I do need to double check both of those measurements because I got these from China. So the ratings on these things uh, can be a little bit off um, and you never really should trust uh, ratings on cheap Chinese sites like Alibaba, which is where I got these ones from. I also have over here a ginormous 6S battery. Now, this is a 2.65 amp hour 6S battery. So this has got a huge amount of power stored up inside of it. And we're actually gonna be using this to run the smaller of the wheels. The larger wheel here, we're actually gonna run on 8S by combining two 4S batteries in series to pump up the voltage high enough to get this thing to run because this thing uh, requires upwards of 25, 26 volts and higher to get it to move, or at least that's what it's rated for. Um, you can probably get it moving lower than that, but it will spin a lot slower. So I do want to give it as much juice as I possibly can with all of these things. So that's the motors and the batteries. And then sitting over here in the corner, I have these little neat Afro speed controllers from Hobby King. None of this stuff is sponsored, by the way. I buy all of my stuff uh, for myself. And yeah, this, um, these speed controllers are 20 amp, but they are high voltage, which means they can run up to 8S. So uh, both of these motors, I think if I've done my calculations correctly, both of them should be able to run on the 20 amp speed controller, this little guy at 6S and this guy at 8S, uh, respectively. So. Uh, maybe, I, I, the one I'm a little worried about is running this big guy here on the 20 amp speed controller. Something tells me that that might get a little bit shaky uh, towards the end there, but mm, that's okay. I'm willing to try that out and potentially fry one of those ESCs and then upgrade from there. The reason I've got these is because these come with Simon K firmware on them natively, and they are apparently relatively easy to reprogram and for those of you who don't know, Simon K firmware is a good firmware to use for drive motors for, or brushless drive motors for combat robots because it can be tweaked and changed and can actually run forwards and reverse on the same ESC at the same time. So it's very good for drive motors, or at least it's better than a lot of the other firmware that's out there at the moment. Um, there are lots and lots of debates at the moment as to whether or not it's good, but it's the best we have currently. Um, so, like I said, we're going to now start using these things. I need to do some testing on them before I jam them into a combat robot, and that's what we're doing today. Today, we are going to build a test rig to be able to test out both of these size motors uh, with these ESCs, and hopefully get moving towards some really interesting combat robots. These guys, I'm thinking, are gonna go into the rebuild of uh, Strange Young Man, who we've seen on this channel already. These wheels are gonna help shrink the chassis down considerably, which will be great because we'll then be able to uh, actually, uh, yeah, like I said, shrink that chassis down and upgrade the armor and potentially even upgrade the weapon as well, which would be really, really cool. And then these guys, these are actually pretty similar to uh, Death Roll, which is one of the BattleBots competitors. Death Roll used four of these to power a 110 kilo robot. And that is one of my goals. I want to get up to and start building 110 kilo robots. So I want to test this guy out, see if he's got that much power. I have a feeling the Death Roll ones may actually use a little bit more power than these guys here. 
Uh, but, like I said, that's something that we need to test. We need to hook this thing up and see how much weight we can get it pushing around before we work out which type of robot we're actually going to jam that in. Okay, so let's get to some design so that we can uh, build up a little test rig. And there we go, it is now completed. So we have two little caster wheels up the front here, and then we have our two little brushless hubbed skateboard wheels at the back. And as you can see, these things spin the outside very freely and quite well uh, with the internal hub staying still. And you can tell that because the wiring itself stays perfectly in place, which is great. Uh, so I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with how all of this stuff turned out. Of course, the only real issue was that I ran out of uh, these single brackets and had to go to some doubles on this side, but uh, between this video and the video where we actually power this thing up, I will replace those and uh, yeah, swap those out for something better, so then we'll nylock all that stuff down and get it working. Obviously, I don't have uh, enough time to get the electronics into it today, and I also want to give this uh, logo in the middle here a bit of a paint job to make it look a little bit more like my actual logo. Uh, or the team logo and then yeah we need to get this thing wired up and ready to go but as I said I don't have time to do that and even if I could actually get it all wired up and ready to go uh, it wouldn't be moving today anyway because I'm sure that the default settings in those ESCs are not going to be correct for these motors so I'm going to have to do some tweaking and some changing and a lot of reading before I get these things actually powered up and running but Look forward that to that in a Tuesday video at some point in the future because I think that's where we're going to be looking at what all of those settings are, what all of those settings mean, and then running this thing around quite a lot, changing various settings and seeing what the pushing power is and how fast we can get these motors to move and all of that kind of good stuff. So there you go. I hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.